Hello, I'm Zappernath of Mog Nation, and this is EQ Next Landmark. Today we're going to go over some of the changes that came in with the patch on Thursday and the hot fixes on Friday. You see the wall behind me here, four new items that you can create on your crafting stations. Those are just paintings uh, that you can put on your wall. Now the first big change has to do with claim permissions. You can now open up your uh, claim management under the shield in the lower left corner and you can see now that uh, you can add claim permissions uh, for all visitors and you can adjust several different uh, levels. You've got the visitor, customer, decorator and builder that you can add for anyone who uh, visits your claim. You can see here that I'm moving from visitor which would allow people to use my crafting stations to customer which adds one additional level there. A decorator and then a builder will let uh, them actually create and destroy on your property. So you can do that for all visitors or you can use the nifty friends list which was added, I'll go over that later, and select one person at a time, type in their uh, friendly name, and give them permissions individually. And once they're added, of course, you can adjust their level or delete uh, from the list as well. So one of the first things you want to do when you log in is double check your claim permissions. Make sure everything is set at the level that you want for your friends and for uh, anyone who visits your claim. Now they've also added a marketplace to the game, although right now uh, no one has permissions to it. They are still working on this. It's a work in progress. Of course, this is alpha. It's not even beta yet, so everyone just needs to be patient while they get this stuff uh, into the game and working properly. Now they've also added overflow inventory to the game. Now if you're like me and have tons of builds on your claim and want to move your claim, uh, you're going to have an absolute ton of stone and wood that has to move along with it. It'll go to a overflow inventory temporarily uh, so that you can move that out into chests and what have you. Now that overflow inventory will only last for 20 hour, 24 hours, sorry, and uh, then it'll just go away. So it'll give you a little bit of time to adjust uh, all of your uh, materials into chests and such. Now I'm going to show you one of the best updates that they did uh, this last week. It's called Tweak Mode. And basically what it does is allows you to place a template or something that you're pasting in more precisely. Now you've heard me complain about this in the past where it's very, very difficult to determine uh, where something's actually being placed because it's tied to your uh, camera angle. If you hold down the shift button while clicking uh, the item that you're placing, it now uh, severs the connection to your camera so you can rotate around and use uh, the tools up in the upper right hand corner to either rotate or move an object. Now you can't resize something that you've templated or that you're pasting. You can resize only uh, uh, props that you create in place. 
This is just uh, going to make things so, so easy. Notice now I'm pasting on top of the item that I placed and again using the shift click let's me rotate around here and make sure that I've got it placed precisely where I want. Now when you're working with microvoxels this is just going to be something that uh, will amazingly help you uh, create grids and such. I'll go through that here in just a moment. Rotation on items that you create are still limited to 90 degrees but again it's just uh, one of the uh, great advancements that they did in this patch. Okay let me get rid of those and we'll work with some microvoxels. Okay, just like anything else in the game, playing with microvoxels and grids is just a matter of trial and error. There's no right or wrong way to do it, just figure out uh, what works for you. I'm going to play around with the grid here for just a little bit, and then we'll move on to some of the other changes that were set into the patch on Thursday and Friday.
Another nice addition is they added a friends list to the game. So you can now build uh, your list of friends. You can see who's online, who's offline. And to add a friend to your list, basically it's slash add friend and then the, uh, the name of the person that you're wanting to add. That'll send them a friend invite that they can uh, either uh, accept or decline and they'll be on your friends list and you'll be added to their friends list as well. So this is a step forward for community level uh, and then you can use this list again to uh, set uh, the security levels on your claims. Now let's see if we can go and sort out the big lumber controversy. Now they added a new crafting station to the game. This is the alchemy station. And that allows the build of refined wood and oils of various types. Now instead of just getting plain wood striped wood and burled wood from trees. You get specialty items uh, called heartwood and then for the oils you'll get uh, various types of unique items as well from harvesting for trees. You have the palm wood or palm heart sorry. Thistle seed which is done in the desert. Palm heart is uh, done in the jungle. Serpentine oil I really haven't found yet. It sits on deciduous trees, but I haven't been able to find the right tree on it. Spindle cone, uh, you can find that in uh, tundra areas, sorry. <laughs> And then I've not found the ancient root stock either. So you create the oils, then you'd create the specialty woods, and then come and craft uh, items that take it. Uh, right now, the only one I found is the rubicite axe, and that'll take a wild heart wood and sundrop heartwood. Instead of taking burled wood now, uh, everything else is taking this heart. You'll get one heart wood for every tree that you chop down, uh, at a minimum anyway. So let's go chop some wood. Now it used to be that you'd want to chop the larger trees down because you'd get uh, more potential of getting burl wood. Now it's just plain wood, so may as well chop down the small trees because you're guaranteed one of the new heartwoods. And there it is. Now on these palmettos, that's what's going to give you the palm hearts.
So those are fairly abundant, easy to get. Um, so whenever you're in a jungle, there's going to be plenty of them. Heading into the desert, uh, this is a change between the patch they put in on Thursday and the adjustments they made on Friday. They made some errors in which trees uh, were going to give you the specialty items, and which ones were giving you striped woods and which were not. Now any of these trees with uh, thorns on them or thistles, they'll give you a specialty item uh, for the thistlewood. Notice you're getting a lot more striped wood, so that's something that you can. I'm sorry, thistle seed, not thistle wood. Uh, but this striped wood is nice to build with, and you're going to get a lot more of it uh, using uh, the desert trees. Now, the downside is uh, in the desert, there's a lot fewer trees by definition, of course, so you're going to have to do a lot more searching for the thistle, uh, thistle seeds. Notice too that after the patch, trees will populate on your uh, view from a much further distance. Now that's a bane and a boon. Of course, uh, you're going to be looking for trees, so it's easier to see them from farther away. But it's also more of a strain on your CPU and GPU. There were some trees on top of this plateau. If no one's beat me to them, we'll be able to get some more thistle seed. Yep, there we go. Now on Thursday, that tree in the background that spreads out at the very top, that was the only thing giving you thistle seed. Thank goodness they've changed that. It will still give you striped wood and heartwood. It's going to be very difficult to run across the desert without chopping down every tree that you come across. coming up on the last type of tree in the desert that will give you thistle seed.
Now that we have some uh, thistle seeds and uh, palm hearts, we'll be able to go ahead and create some of the specialty oils. And once that's done, move on to the refined hardwoods. And finally, you'll be ready to create the higher tiered axes. And again, I think this is just a precursor to what will be in the game later on. Uh, I'm always looking for higher complexity to crafting, something that uh, you can look forward to uh, as far as uh, finding recipes and running through the uh, crafting process. If it wasn't difficult, everyone would have legendary items within the first week, so keep that in mind. There's nothing wrong with having difficulties and complexities in a game. So now we've got the wood to create an axe, but I uh, need to add a little bit more uh, rubicite and elemental rubicite out there. But I've already created one, so all I would be looking to do right now would be create a better one. Now, what I'm showing you now is uh, if you hover over the different types of picks, it's showing you the range of quality that you can make. Uh, I'm not sure why some of them show blue and some of them show green. It may be simply what I've got in my pack. Uh, so you can see uh, maybe a comparison of what you've created and what you can create. Now for one of the more controversial changes of this patch. Something that wasn't supposed to be in this soon, but somehow got into the patch. When the servers came back up Thursday, I saw that instead of having uh, burled wood, uh, plain wood, and striped wood available uh, to build with, I was only seeing plain wood and burled wood and that they were planks and not logs. So quickly under further investigation I realized yes you are going to have to convert logs to planks before you can build with them. Now on Thursday they had a 5 to 1 ratio for every log that you uh, created a plank with uh, you would gain 5 planks. But the speed in which you would do that was one per second. You would change one log into five planks every second. So you notice I've got over a hundred thousand logs uh, that uh, I need to convert to planks before I can build with them. And do the math, that was a ton of time. So they left it in, but on the Friday update they changed it from a 1 to 5 to a 1 to 100 ratio. So you would now create 100 planks for every log that you convert. They also speeded up the crafting time. It's currently faster than one second per conversion. But to do 1,000 logs to planks it still takes a long time. Thank goodness they changed the ratio to 100. So you th see spinning past in my loot log, uh, every log creates 100 planks of plain wood. But 
again it just takes a long time to convert just 1000 it will work uh, those people who use a lot of wood in their creations uh, I'm one of them you'll get by just don't try to do a hundred thousand <laughs> logs to flags because you'll be there all day Yeah, just doing a thousand will create a hundred thousand for you. But I'm going to cancel this here just shortly. Okay, they've also added some more subtle changes in this last patch. One of which is your camera view when you have a tool equipped. Before you could not rotate your view around your character if you had an axe or a pick uh, activated. Now you can unless you are next to uh, something that you can harvest. If you back away then your camera view can be rotated around you. There's also a bit of an issue with some of the changes they made in movement last week and that seems to be fixed in this patch. Last week you were kind of getting caught going uphill anytime that you hit a pothole or something like that you just kind of spun the wheels trying to get out of it and had to use your grappling hook. Now it seems to be back to quote unquote normal or what it was before last week. And they've also added the ability to walk instead of run. Using the period or dot on your keyboard will toggle that back and forth. If you sprint, that'll also turn back on uh, the run option. So now you can go from walk to sprint. Okay, with the patch there was also an issue with some of the items in your pack kind of disappearing or maybe having the wrong graphic associated with it. Right now it looks like coal has been misplaced entirely 
in your inventory. Uh, I should have some coal here, but I haven't been able to find it. However, if you go over to the crafting station, it does show that you have coal available to craft with. So you really haven't lost it. It's just not available to see in your inventory. We'll come over and we'll craft some dynamite. And you'll see that I do have coal available, even though I couldn't find it in inventory. And you can never have too much dynamite, so let's go ahead and create some. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move to some of the other biomes and do a little search for some of the other unique wood items as soon as the server stops bouncing me around here. And again, one of the things that you need to be careful about when you're traveling is making sure that uh, you select what server you want to go to as well as continent. Because when you open up the portal, it still defaults to the first one in the list, which is Courage. So if I want to stay on Liberation, I need to select it and then select the continent. Again, that's caused havoc with people losing where their claims actually are because they didn't realize that they were changing servers when they ch uh, changed islands or continents here at the portal. And there's still a little bit of glitchiness with uh, the Windows mode uh, or full, full Windows mode. Uh, it doesn't act exactly correct. It still hides things in the background. And of course, I'm looking at notes and such, which means that uh, I have to have uh, other screens av available to me. And that's why you see me switching back and forth between windowed mode and full screen window. So let's find some tundra and some old growth forest. And search around for some of these other unique items. Okay, I've been searching around Tundra area to try to figure out what is going to give me the spindle wood. Spindle cone, sorry. I found that you can get more striped wood out here. You can get some burled wood, uh, especially in the old growth forest, but uh, I've yet to find uh, the specialty item for spindle cone. I'm thinking it's one of these small trees up here. Spindly has cones. Okay, let's try it. And I've got my gold axe equipped, and I can't even chop this tree, so uh, thank goodness I've got my higher level axe. So we'll put that on my bar here. There we go. It's giving me burl wood. I 
and my specialty item is spindle cone. So now we found that item. So there's two items I have yet to find. One is supposed to be an old growth, and one's supposed to be on deciduous trees, but I can't find them. There's one type of tree in old growth that I can't chop down, even with my uh, newest axe. So maybe it's uh, something that's supposed to be harvested with a, a higher level axe yet. Okay, after moving around to various continents, I came back to Overlook and came across this unique oddity. The trees keep disappearing and I keep falling through the ground and realized that after moving through several different continents that my CPU uh, processing was pegged out and my temperature for the CPU it increased to what I call mid-range band, which I hardly ever touch, and that would be above 55 degrees Celsius. Uh, the clue came to me when I was running through here because uh, I also have uh, the colors of lights in my computer attached or assigned to various uh, uh, temperature levels. So I get, went to a mid-range temperature level. Uh, the lights changed my computer and I realized that uh, yeah my CPU is pegged at 100 percent. To get around this of course all you have to do is restart the game but I'm um, kind of curious whether we've got some sort of a processor issue with all the additional trees being able to render on your views. And it only seems to happen after you change continents a lot. <laughs> 